Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rose, I'll bring you today's video from Jerusalem. Firstly, sorry for the lack of uploads recently. I have been uh, getting around to some home organization, uh, basically cleaning up all the disarray in my home office and uh, also studying for a tech certification, not a tech certification, just a non-tech certification. So it's been a bit busy. 10.00.138. Today we're going to be looking at uh, how to set up port forwarding on a Bezic router, how to set it up, how to delete it, how to manage it. Um, I did a video before about accessing the Bezic router and the thing to know is Bezic do everything in their power to make it hard for customers to tinker with their own uh, router setups, which is kind of like the way most ISPs do because they don't want to help people who hit a wrong button and deleted something. Uh, so the what you have to do is firstly to get to this, you need to uh, disable the Haganat Cyber, the cyber protection on the Bezic app. Some people did this and said I still I still couldn't get to this page and I said I have no idea about that. Sorry to hear. Uh, but if it does work, then you should be greeted by a page like this. Now to get to this page, you need to know the uh, IP address for the web interface. Uh, my The one here is 10.00.138. And you also need to know the last six digits of the serial number on of your Bezic router. That can be found by looking at the barcode sticker. And uh, it's written here, Miss Paris Sudori. The last uh, six numbers, Shishas Hasifro de Chonochal Miss Paris Sudori. You need to plug this into this little field here, click on enter, and then you get into the router admin interface. So just in the interest of protecting my privacy a little bit here, I'm gonna use the mouse pad to censor some details, very low tech today. So this is what it looks like when you get in, you should hopefully see a green light saying your internet connection is good. You do have a button for English here, but it doesn't really help that much because the UI is uh, in English except for this page. But on the right here, uh, you have the three options for, uh, firstly, this is actually a useful page because you can see here, if you didn't see my mouse pad, but uh, you'll be able to see your PPP, your point to point, uh, I forget the last letter, point to point protocol. The point to point pro protocol connection detail. So if you are considering getting rid of your Bezic router and using your own modem, uh, you'll need those to connect their network. Next, you have the Hagadrat Reshet Al Khotid for managing Wi Fi. And finally, you want to click on this one. It's Hagadrat Mit Kanmot, advanced settings, and that will allow you to do more things, but only after you get through a capture. This is the capture screen. Again, just to kind of emphasize the point of Bezic putting this behind security, which I'm not complaining about, is definitely a good thing, but you do need to enter that and then click on the Kinesala Hagadurot Mitkad mode option and we'll get to the next screen. Here we get to see some nice information about what we have running on our network. I know this is about port forwarding, but I just want to know uh, exactly uh, what router that Bezic is giving you for whatever reason. You can do so here, it'll tell you the serial number of the router as well as the model name and its MAC address, uh, just in case that's helpful. And on the left here, you have uh, more options and we want to click again on the advanced setup button to really get to the stuff we want to do. Okay, so the port forwarding management area is NAT virtual servers. I don't know why, but it took me forever to find this because I was looking for a port forwarding button, but that's where it is. So this is why this is exactly this is how Bezic uh, do port forwarding or configure it. You have to set up virtual servers. So uh, I can see the port forwarding rules I've created here. And uh, if you don't have any, you'll want to click on the add button to get one set up. Okay, so from here, it's pretty straightforward in terms of getting the port forwarding rules set up. Uh, by default, they have uh, the all interface option here. This is the way Bezic do their WAN configuration. I'm guessing it's like for redundancy that they have redundant routes to their network because uh, I don't know why else they'd have three, but if you know, uh, shout out in the comments. Um, they make it kind of, you know, uh, easy that if they have some port forwarding rules uh, all kind of ready to go, like for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2000, apparently you needed all these TCP and UDP ports open. Um, but let's say you're setting up a something more bespoke, such as you're running an open VPN server on your local network and you wanted to get that running. So I'm just looking to the side to try see. Ah, yes, UDP 1194. So I'm going to go for, uh, instead of selecting a service, I'll go for custom service. And then you need to tell it, well, um, where, which device are we forwarding the port to? And uh, this would be where it's very helpful to set up custom static IPs on your local network. So I'm going to say, let's say it's 10.0.0.1. 
let's go back to our OpenVPN example. That's your OpenVPN server or maybe an NAS running the server. You could also specify the IPv6 address. And what did I say? UDP 1194. So I'm going to go for 1194, 1194, 1194. Uh, the reason that this is twice is it's a it's a range if you want to forward the range of ports. You can do so like this. But in this case, I'm just forwarding port 1194. And I'm just doing TDP, TCP. You have the option of TCP or UDP or just specifying one or the other. So I'm just going to go for TCP. And then you need to click Apply Save, but not before you give it a name. It will ask you for a name at some point. And you can just write down what the port forwarding rule is. And then you can delete them later if you choose to. And of course, a word, a word, a mandatory word of warning. Only do this if you know what you're doing and make sure that you have good security on your local network if you are going to be exposing ports uh, to the outside, the big, scary outside world. Thanks for watching today's video. Hope it was helpful. Until the next one, goodbye.